Welcome. In this video, we'll quickly go with you over the concept of XPOP and validating transactions via XPOP. So I found an article by you today and unfortunately I'm not quite happy with the quality. So uh, I would generally speaking not recommend getting, well, any, so at least no XOP news from you today since the, yeah, the article quality is very bad. So, um, so they, for example, report on a weekly basis that Jed McCaleb is selling XRP, but this has been going on for years and it's not newsworthy. So they sum it up and try to make clickbait. For example, they go to Jed McHale's account, then they just, so I'm just gonna go get it explored there. They just go to Pakistan there, then they just check out whatever they, they sum up the transactions over. So right now he's not been selling, but they sum up the transactions over, for example, one week or two weeks, then uh, say whatever, uh, whatever, uh, Ripple, uh, well, XRP uh, co founder, so XRP co creator, Jet McCaleb, so 200 million XRP in two weeks. And I tried to create clickbait, and I don't really like that. So I'm not the biggest fan of uh, you today. And unfortunately, they also got the XPOP presentation a little bit wrong there. So I will quickly go over it so we can see here. Then let's quickly go over it. Yeah. Developers of, of the Expo Ledger Labs is Office Studio that addressed XRPL based digital payment solutions. Mo de demonstrated the concept of, of their offline instrument for XRP transactions based on QR codes. So there's the first mistake. So it's not really about doing a transaction offline. The transaction will happen on chain, but validating a transaction. So the base concept is we will have a device which is not connected to the internet. So I'm just going to quickly get up draw.io. Right, so let's get that one there. So we will have a device which will not be connected to the internet. So for example, well, let's say it's a vending machine. So we've got here a vending machine, yeah, we'll just go right like that. And then one here is a vending machine. And this one here has no internet. It, it has a camera and it also has a display. So these are the output devices and whatever and some internal uh, more hardware components, right? So for example, let's say we want to buy a Coke there. And then we've got a device Let's, this would be our phone. So let's say this is a phone and on this phone is the sum app installed. So any kind of um, uh, software wallet. Okay. And obviously the phone has internet. All right. So from, a from the workflow, um, it starts with a vending machine showing, showing a QR code to pay. So it starts with QR code, QR code shown. So this is just a payment QR code for payment. And we'll also, in the meantime, look at it at, in, at the video here. It's so here's the demonstration. Notes. And you can see here, the first thing is a QR code. And this is just a payment QR code. So there's also, Wiza also uh, has shown the solution, how it works. So if I'm just quickly going there on this website, it's the payments, it, uh, it's that one here, yeah. So there's a website which even helps you with creating these QR codes. So you can, for example, so it's, it's uh, sample.xrpay.com on this website. You can generate these QR codes. Um, it's loading, loading, loading. All right. <laughs> so in the meantime, I'm going to go on here. So like I said, this is a QR code. This is the phone. The phone is, like I said, connected to the internet. And there's a QR code and to scan to make the payment. Now you're scanning the, so this QR code only contains instructions. So uh, for payment to a certain address. So now he's scanning it. Like I said, and and now this is a transaction here, which is on on chain. So like Next I said, time. connected to the internet. So now Next he's make the payment. doing the payment. But like I said, on this is payment, happening yeah. on on now the internet. The machine is offline. It doesn't have an uh, internet. Connection. But the important part is the the machine here, the vending machine itself doesn't have an internet connection. Okay, that's the part there. Okay. So right now, like I said, this is happening on on chain. So right now, the the transaction is being validated by the XML ledger. And yeah. this was actually succeeded. Okay. So now we're at the part there that now we're transferring data from the phone to the machine because we want to prove to the machine that the payment, that we did a payment. And that's where XPOP came, uh, comes in. Because obviously the QR code has to be animated because showing one QR code is not enough data. And if you show multiple QR codes, you're able to even transfer data. So the QR codes contain data, tell you which, uh, at which point are, how much data, they wish, so how many images it contains and so on. So it's just a certain standard. And multiple images together, together just make a chunk of 
data. Uh, this data is the proof of payment, the, the which payment is being stuff. transferred. Through so now he's going to uh, load up the XPOP for that payment. Right, so right now the, the camera is starting. So like I said, the vending machine which has no internet. So you can load an XPOP for any payment or any transaction type on the XRP ledger. Right, so now he is showing the, so his XPOP would be just, like I said, so just some data is being transferred. I, I would have to look more into the code, but the code is not published yet, but it will explain it further either uh, as well. But as you can see here now, the QR code here is animated. So it's quickly changing the images, but the general, the general idea is transferring data. So now there are many images okay, and this is just for transferring cool. data from the phone to the device, which is or offline. To the uh, vending machine. So right now it's just and reading the X pop and it's reading, yeah, frame by frame. So picture by picture it's reading that and compiling the whole chunk and of data. Not compiling, I meant like reading. Like. Right, and then it was able to verify, yep, the person did do the payment on chain and the machine was able to verify that it was a valid payment and that the person actually did the payment and that's why the <laughs> vending machine is, um, yeah, uh, giving out water or coffee or whatever. And that's the idea here. Okay, so that's how it works, at least to my understanding. So I want to highlight that. Uh, I could be wrong there, but I'm doing it to the best of my technical understanding there. And right, what else has been claimed here? So like I said, it, uh, so the offline instrument for exit transactions. So the transaction, like I said, is happening online. And the QR code scanning is a normal thing. It's, it has nothing to do with XPOP. So no internet need for XPL transfer. So like I said, that's not true. Actually, so like I said, for the exit ledger transfer, you do need internet because the transfer is happening on the phone. The phone is connected to the internet and the phone is submitting the signed transaction to the exit ledger. According to a presentation down to Apex APL Labs at Apex, developer Summit and Talon, it's Steam created a viable prototype of the system that allows users to initiate extra transfers online. So like I said, that is not true again. So we have to remove that part again. That's a falsehood, unfortunately. Exit ledger is proof of payments protocol, so it's called XPOP, so proof of payments or POP, and the X probably for trustless, can be utilized by a variety of devices that are not connected to the internet, that is true. Uh, so it's not about being not connected 24 seven, but the idea is that there are many devices out there which just do not have internet connection. So instead of all the, all the uh, vendors being forced to purchase new devices which do have internet connection, they can easily integrate that and just uh, still be able to verify that the payment is valid without having internet, that is the idea. So, um, right, what else is there? For instance, it's compatible with vending machines and public transport. So, um, right, so like I said, uh, I don't know what to make of the statement. The main idea is that it's just about devices who, which do not have internet connection. A device with XPOP integrated issues a QR code on display on, or on paper, okay, fair enough. So like I said, uh, the, so it's, it's not right now about uh, XPOP, so it's just about be, uh, displaying a QR code, which says where should the payment being sent, should be sent to. So like I said, unfortunately this thing doesn't work right now, I think. So the website seems to be having some problems here uh, because then it could have quickly shown you how to issue these QR codes there. Uh, but let's go on here. Uh, on its display or on paper, while the holder of Exable based assets can repay it in an in instant centralized manner. Okay, so like I said, the person with the phone scans the QR code, does the tr transaction on ledger, online, on chain. Exable Labs uh, representatives are sure that this innovation can give a proper spin to XRP retail adoption. Fair enough. So then the quote leads with the quotes, you can't do anything wrong there. Uh, Axel Hope Peter is on its way, okay, fair enough. And then he's just telling us that we have to wait until the source code is being published. So we're also looking into that. But like I said, there are, were well, some falses in this article. And I just wanted to correct that uh, because some people, like I said, seem to have misconceptions regarding that. I think it's the easiest way to understand how it works when you just see the demo here, when you see, have the, 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 when you understand the problem, like I said, machine does not have internet, phone does have internet, phone, uh, well, the machine somehow needs to know that the payment has gone through. Therefore, the phone is able to do the pay payment on chain and use XPROP to transfer data. And the data contains the proof of payment and the machine is able to validate that it's actually valid so that, that the phone is not trying to quote unquote lie or do something malicious there, but the machine is able to verify that the transaction has been done. And yeah, that's how XPROP works. Um, I will also link the video. I would also recommend watching that one here again because anybody who watches the presentation will also be probably able to understand how it works actually. So, okay, this is a little bit more into detail. So, regarding the encodings there. 
um, right, what else is there? So, like I said, the idea is that with animated QR codes and the the main gist here is, like I said, doing the data transfer from the phone to the machine. So XWAP is just, so XWAP, so the animated QR code is just a data transfer, the way of transportation. So how do you um, transport data from the phone to the machine via, uh, well, like I said, uh, scanning the animated QR codes, putting it together, and then you have one, one chunk of data or one file representation. So it depends, like I said, what the protocol is and what the format is. And yeah, so in this case, it, it, it was mentioned it was base85 uh, encoded, I think it was, yeah. All right, so that's it. So just wanted, like I said, to um, yeah clarify some things there because yeah there are misconce many misconceptions out there. Like I said, if I said something wrong here, you can always correct me. But at least I uh, try to explain the entire concept to the, to the best of my understanding, and also to recommend not really using you today for news because it's like I said of very poor quality. So we can also, for example, so to just quickly show you an example, if we would just look for, so I, I'm not sure if they are, if they if these people who write these blogs um, are like, are like uh, employed there, or if these are just, uh, just like bloggers, I'm assuming the, 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 the latter one, like that these people, yeah, like just do it for fun, I guess. I'm, I'm not quite sure. So I'm not trying to insult anybody there and anybody can make mistakes. Jet, Mac, Caleb. But on the other hand, also we must understand that it's a news outlet and they intend to, like I said, uh, get as, ma much, as many views as possible. And there is that. So we've got that, yeah. Jet and Michael's allegedly 821 million XP left details. What else is there? So Jet and says 80 million XP in the past two weeks. Oh my God, that's, that's horrible. Amazing. 182 million XOP sent to Jet McKay. Well, Ripple unlocks another billion XOP. So like I said, it's just trying to create a, a shocking effect or anything else. Jet McKay says 240 million last three weeks. Oh my God, that's crazy. We've never seen this before. So like I said, this has been going on forever. You can, there's the great, there's the Jet to take you. Kiku Dev website. We can also check that. So the, sell, the selling has been, so this is something Unusual that there has been no selling in the last 30 days, so that is definitely curious. But except for that, the selling has been going on forever. So you can even you can track it back until 2019, so the 6th October of 2019. So wow, exactly two years. So for the past two years, you can see the selling pressure. So the, the selling has been going on forever. And it's like the selling is so he's allowed to sell a certain amount based on the volume. So that's why it differs and it's not newsworthy in my opinion. You can basically, you can definitely tell a story and educate people on the general subject, but telling people every two weeks that selling has been going on is like just, yeah, just telling people about one event. It's like like telling people every day that it's raining or that the weather is sunny, the weather is not sunny or whatever. It's like, it, yeah, it's, oh, well, well, maybe the weather is a bad analogy for that, but just like just telling one metric about something that has been going on forever and it's not like something new, like I said. And again, 453 million XRP sold for Jet McCabe in May. XRP scan data, whatever. R yeah, Ripple wise, 408 million XRP to Jet. So, like I said, all these things. So, people in Unis space always were dumb and whatever. So, it, that's my main problem with it because I, I don't mind if they report it. I can do, like I said, it's, it's not the news where nothing changes. Um, but the the problem is that n people new to the crypto space think like that that uh, for example yeah the price is gonna dump because of that news, uh so yeah that's that's my main problem with that. Yeah, that's so I'm not really a big fan of you today. Like I said again, what is there one million XRP? Almost one million XRP shifted by Ripple and Wells and whatever. So like I said, because you can't really make anything of it because it also does not really affect price or anything. But yeah, like I said, I'm not the biggest fan of you today and would not recommend it, at least for newbies and also for people who actually use it. I would recommend uh, looking at better news outlets uh, yeah, other than you today because I'm really appalled by the poor quality, like I said. All right, so that's it for this video. This is my little rant there. So thanks for watching and see you in the next video.